guys. How you doing today? Good, good. Good. You're warm good. and cozy wherever you are. It's cold in some of your locales. A little bit. Or in Cheryl's case, I guess it's summer. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Is it hot? Oh, it's beautiful. It's like 35, 38. Oh, it's just mm. a bit hot. A bit too hot, close to a hundred. Oh my gosh! <laughs> to the north, in the northern hemisphere, that just sounds like <laughs> a, a, Christmas, yeah. a hot Christmas. I'm dreaming of a hot Christmas. That's yeah. there's no song like that. That's <laughs> oh, we have those songs in Trinidad. Don't you worry. Do you really? Do you? <laughs> ah, wow! Oh, Trinidad. Oh. Santa, come to party. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That sounds awesome. Oh. <laughs> you, you know, last week we're talking about preparing for these shows and, and, and you know, Rose, your, your home, basically, not really home, but like your home to, to get your show together. And, and Cheryl, you, your gallery is kind of in your town, close by, and not too, too far. But Denise, <laughs> not only do you move around the world, like I don't know how many times has it been, like nine times maybe you guys have moved? Uh, no, I, well, I've moved around within the city too, so I've moved a bunch. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then to do your shows, like this last one, so now you're in Quebec and the last yeah. show you did was uh, Art Miami. Basel, Miami. Yes. So that's... And I saw you at IDS in Vancouver. Oh, yes. I did that, Vancouver, too, which is on the other side of the country, which is so far. Uh, a, a similar to, I, I think it was a similar experience um, uh, preparing for that as it was for Miami this time around, because it does involve, I have to say, Miami was a little bit more tricky because it involved going across the border with the artwork, which was a whole different level of, uh, of, of shit shows, let's say. <laughs> Yeah, because you didn't even know where your shipment was until the last minute, did you? No, no, oh, really? it was quite a something. I don't remember hearing about that. Yeah, no, well, I had to deal with. There's different things you have to deal with. When I uh, when I did New York back in April, I was also going to cross the border, but I have a van, so in that case, I just loaded all the artwork in my van, and drove across the border and just brought it to New York. Which was still, you have to still deal with the border crossing. But this time around, I had to build a crate. Then I had to wrap all the artwork so it wouldn't get damaged while it was in the crate. So I had to make sure it was all nice and, and packed and everything. Then I had to arrange for somebody to bring it to Miami. Then I had to arrange for somebody to receive it in Miami. And then I had to arrange for that person that received it to bring it to the actual show because the person receiving it is going to hold on to it for, from, for like about th three weeks before the show because with shipping internationally especially, they, you need a larger window of artwork to arrive. You cannot count on those three days at the show physically where you, your courier can come into the, to the convention center and just drop off your crate. It, there is so many delays with customs and all those things that you have to have a warehouse, somebody to hold on to the shipment. And then, uh, of course, I needed to cross the border, which meant I needed a, uh, a broker, is what they are called, somebody to do the paperwork for me, somebody to, to tell the U.S. Customs, this artwork is, this has this value and this person, me, needs to pay this amount in order for this artwork to cross the border. You have to pay uh, according to the value of the artwork that you are shipping. You have to pay an entry fee, even though there are no no duties on on artwork going into uh, into the U.S. And even though you have haven't pay. sold it, no, yeah, no. There's and there, you you don't even um, even bringing it back into the country uh, because. If you bring it back physically, if I would be driving it over, it wouldn't be a problem coming back into Canada. But if you ship through uh, a shipper, then you need to have a different broker, this time around a Canadian broker, who is going to tell the Canadian customs people that this particular shipment went from Canada to Miami and came back to Canada, which meant, means that <laughs> the Canadian government has not, is not allowed to, to charge any duties or taxes on it. Because it initially came from Canada, but I need to hire wow. somebody 
to tell Canadian Customs that. So that's so already that's, quite a cost. You've got your entry fee, your broker American, your broker Canadian, your shipping, and your warehouse. Yes. That, uh, uh, if I count it all, I would say the shipping, the warehouse, then the shipping back because you're shipping two ways, and the broker fee twice brings it around fifteen hundred dollars US. Wow. Oh. Gee, I thought it would be and more than that. Dollars. And that's just getting your work there yeah that's not even including this is not including having a booth there uh, being there physically flying there uh, being there in a hotel renting the car having your insurance all that kind of stuff so that's just financially a, a big investment and then on top of that because it's financially such a big investment you need to make sure that you're well prepared to do the work when you're there because not only need you, do you need to make sure that your booth looks like perfect, perfect. it needs price tags it need, you need to like calculate all the the prices in us dollars you need um i have like a, a web a specific web page where people can see all the artwork that is available so i can show them that there's other pieces if they find one of these pieces too large or too small or right. it's not the right city for them then you need a way to receive money in the United States. If you're a Canadian or if you're from another country, you need oh a way to, to receive your money there. So you need to f like figure out how to do that. Either you're going to send them invoices uh, through Square, which I've done before, where they just get the invoice right away on their phone, pay it, and I get the payment, which works well. This time around, I was able to open an American bank account. So now I have both Square and Stripe that I can use in the US. So I can just uh, take Cana uh, US currency instead of uh, um, a Canadian currency, which makes it a little bit more e easy um, in, communing in communicating with people. Well, the customer to hear pricing, it, but because more otherwise, for you? Hmm? Is it more difficult for you then to, to uh, no. convert it? No, it was difficult or... to get that done. But ah. once that is done, it's easier for me. But now Because now I can have a direct conversation about pricing in their own currency while if i tell people this painting costs this much but i sent them an invoice for canadian dollars then the painting looks twice as expensive because the canadian dollar sucks <laughs> mm. oh so my. that's a lot more like a lot more hurdles for people to cross so you want to yeah. make it as easy for them as possible yeah so yeah. there's just a lot of like small things that are involved in doing shows like these it's i had no idea that there was all of that involved just even before you're you're like getting I like I already had heard how much work you had done when you actually got to the show or the venue I should say and then what, yeah. so what do you have to do when you get to the venue that's a whole other range well of you have to um pick up your badge and communicate with the show people you have to make sure that your crate arrives with him which in my case it did a day and a half late uh almost two days late then you have to um, unpack that crate you have to make sure all the artwork is up so you have to measure everything you have to uh, make sure it all level and and all nicely like spaced out and you have to put up your i have vinyl lettering that i that i create like vinyl uh, stick on letters mm -hmm. uh, for my slogan and my name which mm -hmm. i i make at home on my cricket it's mm -hmm. a, like i can just make them myself it's much i used to have them done by, by people, it. but this is much more affordable. Yeah. Um, and then you have to put up your price tags and, and make sure you're, you're um, emotionally ready to uh, do this thing. <laughs> after, yeah, after, oh, yeah, after, after all the stress of, of uh, not having your crate and having to do everything and, and stressing out about it, you have to take some time for yourself before opening mm. night and like sort of visualize how am I going to talk to people how what conversations what do i want to have how do i how am i going to introduce this work to them like which stories do i want to tell them how do i want to take them on this journey through my artwork mm. and i always need a little bit of mental time to, uh, yeah, to get there that makes sense because you're you're trying to refocus on what you're really there for exactly when you've had to have all your other hats on it's very it's a very important step because you you forget sometimes you're so stressed 
and and so um, into making sure everything is right. Uh, You're in your production the, manager mode. Yes, and then when mm. you are, mm. you have to make that switch into being in like um, show mode. I call it like I yeah. have to be in that mindset where I am ready to ask people the right questions to to make the right remarks on the at the right time and to to tell the right stories for the right pieces that are there at that moment. Mm. And sometimes it's a little difficult to get get your head around um, how to talk to people. I find that difficult personally. So I always have to take some time and sort of get myself in the right mode for that. Is it different in each city that you're going to that you'll see different kinds of people that will be attracted to your work? Yeah, and um, the conversations are slightly different, but uh, it's it's very similar. Uh, the the way I uh, I mean, it's the same artwork, so you you'll have the same type of conversations, and and um, the more you do it, the the more easier it becomes to to get in sort of a rhythm, uh, and to get sort of um, in a rhythm of asking them questions, so they can t give you lots of information about themselves. Because you yeah. want to know about them. I, I always tend to want to talk too much. So I have to be really careful. Um, and I don't believe and that for a second, share. but okay. That's energy. Yeah. yeah. That nervous energy. Uh, it, yeah. But I, I, it's better to, for them to talk to me so that I can get to know them. Ask you questions. Yeah. Yeah. And then you ask, get to ask them questions, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, um. yeah, that's uh, it, it's a whole lot. But now that we've talked about my thing, I'm actually curious, Ross, because you, you do uh, these studio events too, where you have people that you work, work with and, and mm -hmm. that uh, come into your space, either physically or virtually. How do you mm -hmm. prepare for that? Well, you know, I'm not in the studio today. Otherwise, I'd like turn the camera around and <laughs> show you with a, here's this paint set up and here's this wall that we've got. This is where people will line up. So I facilitate a, a, a process painting workshop and um, you can have like 10, 15 people in the studio at a time. So there's all that paper on the wall and we do a uh, conversation. There are conversational components to it. Um, we'll sit in a circle basically to do that. And none of this is the hard part, right? Like I got to take care, make it, I've got to dress the set. It's not really like what you do, Rose. Like you really have to like get it together. Like I don't have to get it together. I just have to kind of dress the set. I kind of have to push some things around. I'm rearranging my studio now so that I'm going to have a curtain for my own work on the opposite wall now, instead of having to take everything down <laughs> and put it back up after everybody's gone. I've got, I'm going to open up the, oh, my curtains open. I can do it. Now it's closed. Um, the hard part is I prepare um, because this is a text-based kind of thing. Um, it's they're thematic. I have to find the text. I have to understand something about the text. That's not the hard part either. That's okay. The hard part is I. It's a what we do is we. It's a it's a. Um, we use a Jewish technique of study, which is about sitting together and talking about it, and it's that discussion is prepped by questions. It's coming up with the questions that are going to be generative questions. That's the part that takes the longest out of anything. It can take me days, sometimes a week, after I've found the thing that I that I, I want to talk about or that they've hired. I also do professional development uh, pieces. And um, that it can be really hard because, you know, you don't want to go for a yes or no question. Like we did this one about, um, about love, grief, and depression. I mean, those were the big, the big terms of it the other day and the the image that was being given was a hot flame or a cold flame that was in the the quote from the person and uh you know i looked at it, it's like what is a cold flame i don't know what a cold flame is and i'm like researching stuff about a cold flame like because maybe it exists somewhere i don't know and then you know think about it metaphorically it has to work for me too in order for me to talk I'm not really talking about it, like I'm facilitating, mm. you know? Yeah. Mm. Then what's the question going to be? Right? So the question really is almost every time. So like, well, how do you feel about that? But it can't just be like, you know, yeah. I, that's just kind of lame to put it out like that. So because that's to generate the conversation and go into kind of the next one too. So, and, and we, 
uh, I do this some, sometimes with my wife, and we like have like five questions per um, study or subject or something. That's why it, just trying to find <laughs> that fifth question. <laughs> Four is usually like, oh, great. Oh, five. Get well, because you're tapping into the poetics of the process to start everybody off. So you have to go through it yourself. It's so true. It is so true. Right? Like, Rose, you're right. If if the if it doesn't work for me, like if I'm not genuinely curious yeah. about what it is, it, you know, it, it would be translate. like... Yeah, it doesn't translate. It would be going into, it would like be going into your show, any of your shows with someone else's artwork. Yeah. And then you're going to talk about someone else's artwork. And even though the model that I use is a facil facilitator. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so much better with your accent, Patricia. A, a, a participant facilitator model. Um, you know, so 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 I go through it anyways. But yeah. if I don't go through it before, I, you know, it's not a successful anything. It's just a, I'm then just participating. Yeah, yeah. Not <laughs> it's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same thing. Yeah. Um, so there's a uh, there's a quality of what Denise is talking about about prep, mental, psychological yeah. prep for all of us. I mean, when mm. Cheryl was talking, all I heard was strategize 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 right. right when is this marketing piece going to go out it's like timing it all perfectly and for the planning thing. for the next show with this show and bringing right. them back and it there's just so much tactical strategizing for everybody for all of these scenarios it's really yeah. artists do more than just create people that's right you said yeah you that's said, where it all starts doesn't it it starts way yeah. back yonder doesn't it, it way back um, yeah yeah it does yeah well Rose, you, even, you said small yeah. business that's what you said your business yeah mm, it's yeah. how otherwise you're not in business <laughs> <laughs> well it's it's actually it's actually sort of started where wait what with with what you are saying ross that's where it all starts doesn't it coming yeah. up with the questions and yeah. um getting a feeling for what you actually want to um, show in your art, mm -hmm. what, what it's all about. And, and that's where it does start. And that's really important um, before you pick up your brushes, you yeah. know, before you actually send out the invitations. Yeah. 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 Back there. Like, what, what are you, what is your intention? What are you doing? What, what, what is this about? What, what do I yeah. want to share? Speaking yeah. of sharing, speaking of sharing, um, we, I know we have to end in a second. Um, Denise, you said you put together an anthology program or um, an omnibus. I'm not using the right words here. You put together a compil. That's the word. Thank you. Yes. Rose, a compilation episode. What 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 would people see, and what's the episode called? Well, this is uh, the episode that we ran uh, the last week of the year, the last week of 2023. And I created sort of an overview of our previous, uh, what we did in 2023. So I'm showing you every single box we opened and every layer we painted. So if you're curious about our project and where we are and you have no idea what this thing is about, then episode 93 and a half, which, uh, which <laughs> <laughs> premiered on a, December the 28th, that's the one uh, I would advise you to watch to see uh, what Palimpsest is all about. Oh, yeah. how wonderful. Oh, that sounds really exciting. That sounds You'll get crazy. caught up in 20 minutes. 20 minutes for the whole yeah. mm. Going to miss all our great conversations, though. So everyone out there in the world, come, back, come on back and meet with us again in our studios. And we'll tell you more about our life as artists and the Palimpsest project. Yes. Yes. Bye, you guys. I'll see you soon. <laughs>